This episode is brought to you by Shit Audio, manufacturers of sanely priced DACs, amplifiers, preamplifiers, and EQ devices. Click the link in the show notes for more information. This video is going to be part news item, part review, and part award citing. And we're going to be talking about the Chinese network streaming company, WIM. Now, before we get to what's new, we need to talk about what's old. Well, slightly old. I got one of these at the start of the year. This is the WIM Mini. It's a little hockey puck sized network streamer. And it has an analog output, albeit three and a half mil. Not that that's a sign of bad quality compared to RCAs. It's all about the implementation. And then we've got USB-C for power, and then Toslink to feed an external DAC. And this thing does Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, Apple AirPlay 2. It does Cobas inside the Wim Home app. And the Wim Home app is very, very good indeed. It's nice and slick, it's fast, it's easy to understand. And I believe that Cobas inside the Wim Home app is also gapless. And I think the Wim Home app now also supports Amazon Music as well. I don't have an Amazon account, so I can't really comment on that. Oh, and I almost forgot the, the touch panel on the top. You've got volume up, volume down, play pause. There's no red hot chili peppers button here. But this is a very small hockey puck sized device. It can be tucked away out of sight very easily. And the best thing about it, it sells for a roughly a hundred bucks. Now the three and a half mil output on the Wim Mini. So using its internal DAC. To me, it didn't sound all that great. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't Wonderful. I much preferred tapping its Toslink output and feeding that into an external DAC of choice. And I think that's what most people are doing. They're just using it as a, a network streamer. From what I can tell from looking at comments, forum chatter, I wrote about this on my website back in February. But then last month, Wim emailed me saying, we've got a new model coming out. It's called the Wim Pro. It's in this box here. And if you're thinking, well, John, how can you possibly know what the WinPro does? Well, they sent me two. This one I'm giving away to one of my patrons next month. But the first WinPro is already unboxed. It's sat on top of my Kallax unit behind me. And as you can probably guess, it's a much larger unit. It's a bit bigger than an Apple TV. It's kind of like a, a bit taller than an Aurelic Aries Mini, if you know what that is. So it's an altogether sort of more substantial unit. It's much harder to tuck away out of sight. And the touch panel that was on top of the WIM Mini is now on the front of the WIM Pro, which to me isn't quite as convenient when sort of bending down to hit play pause or to change the volume. But on the Pro, we get an ethernet socket, which was completely missing from the WIM Mini. And that thing, the small hockey puck thing, was Wi-Fi only. So if you have an allergy to Wi-Fi or you insist on everything being connected over Ethernet, then you're going to want to take a look at the WIM Pro. Now, unfortunately, the WIM Pro still features the same DAC circuit as the WIM Mini. So it sounds a bit lackluster. It doesn't have the avidity of the Argon Audio Solo that we made a video about a few months ago. It doesn't have the airiness or the spaciousness of the squeeze box touch. And I've done both of these side by side comparisons recently. I don't really rate the DAC inside the Wim Pro. And I did email Wim about it. And they said, yeah, it's the same DAC as inside the Mini. And we think as Wim that most people will be using this device with an external DAC. And I agree. Before we get to that, I do think that the DAC inside the Wim Pro is good enough, or it's certainly good enough for me for TV playback. That means hooking my TV's output into its Toslink input. Because yes, Wim have added a Toslink input to the back of the Wim Pro. It's right next to the Toslink output, which we had on the Mini. But on the Pro, we also get a coaxial output as well. So if your DAC only does coax, or if you prefer coax and hate Toslink for whatever reason, that's a matter for you then 
you're going to be sorted by the, the Win Pro. But just to drive the point home to the point of annoyance, I really do think that for music playback, when played through even a modest hi-fi system like that which I set up last week with the KEF Q150 and also with the monitor audios that you see behind me, when you've got the, the Win Pro as the DAC, yeah, it just, it just sounds a bit dull and a bit flat. And I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend hooking up an external DAC and you can get an external DAC that easily has either a Toslink input or a coax input. But this is not a DAC review, so I'm not gonna cover that today. We'll cover that in maybe the next video, maybe. Now, high-res audio fanatics, so not me, will want to know that both the Toslink output and the coaxial output on the Win Pro offer support for PCM up to 24-bit 192. There's no DSD support, no worries. But crucially, unlike when I first looked at the Win Mini, the Toslink and coaxial outputs on this device are now bit perfect. So if we feed it a 44.1 kilohertz Redbook CD quality signal, that's what comes out of the Toslink socket. And if we feed it 192, that's what comes out of the Toslink socket and by association, the coaxial socket. Although you do have to set bit perfect up in the Wim Home app. Now, what about streaming support? Well, like the Mini, the Pro does, oh, it does Bluetooth as well, I forgot to say that the, uh, the Mini does Bluetooth, but we also get Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, Apple AirPlay 2, and then everything that the Wim Home app gives us. However, the Pro also adds Google Chromecast. Now, I used to be more enthusiastic about Google Chromecast than I am today. Why is that? Well, I've checked this three times now with three different devices. It seems that Rune is no longer gapless across Chromecast. Any music playback app that you use to connect over Chromecast isn't gapless, but Rune used to send a single stream across Chromecast, but it doesn't seem to anymore. We get slight gaps between tracks. So if you're a Rune user, I recommend using the AirPlay input on the Wim Mini or the Wim Pro to yeah, to integrate it into your hi-fi system. The other thing that the Wim Pro adds is something called Amazon Music Cast. Now, as I said earlier, I don't have an Amazon account. I mean, I've got Kobo's Tidal, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music. I think that's enough for one person. I'm sorry, I don't have Amazon, so I don't really know what Amazon Music Cast is, but I'm making you aware of it here. And a bit like Sonos devices, the Wim Pro also has a pair of RCA analog inputs. So that means we can feed it an analog signal and then it will digitize that upon entry and then make it available to stream to another WIM device somewhere else in the house if you want to do that. I don't really want to do that, not really, but I guess it could be useful for some people. We need to talk about the WIM Pro's price. I had to email WIM to get this information because it's not on the net yet. I don't think that this device is on sale yet, maybe next week or the week after but it's gonna sell for 150 bucks, which I was actually quite surprised by because I thought they might go for 200, 250, but had they done that, I would have said, get the Argon Audio Solo. But the difference with the WIM is it will be available in North America and in the UK, and the Argon is not. But if you're just feeding an external DAC, I think either one would suffice. I mean, both of them do Chromecast, AirPlay, Spotify Connect, although the Argon Audio is Rune ready. As far as I'm aware, Wim have Rune readiness for the Pro on their development roadmap. And we know from looking at the software updates that have piled out of Wim throughout 2022 that they do make good on those promises. They've really added a lot of functionality to the Wim Mini since, really since January when I first got my hands on one. Now, the thing is, is that if you don't need Chromecast or you don't need coaxial or you don't need an ethernet input, then you're probably gonna just be nicely served by the Wim Mini and you can save yourself 50 bucks. And for me, I still think the Wim Mini is the best value here. And in fact, I think the Wim Mini is one of the best value network streamers that I've ever used. And I don't say that lightly. And I say it because 
it's now cheaper to buy a Wim Mini than it is to buy a Pi and then burn an ISO to a micro SD card and then put that into the Pi and boot it and configure it and set up a Pi, a Raspberry Pi, as a network streamer. And I never thought this would happen so quickly. I thought it would take hi-fi manufacturers like Wim many years to get a streamer priced at 100 bucks that did AirPlay and Tidal Connect and Spotify Connect. And then if you get the Pro, it'll do Rune Ready eventually. So even the Pro at 150 might still convince many people to just bypass the Raspberry Pi completely, especially at the moment when Pis are very hard to find and will be for the foreseeable future and used market prices are sky high. I still think you probably get a Win Pro for cheaper than a Pi, but definitely the Win Mini. And here's the rub really is that <laughs> I really want to say that the Win Mini is my favorite network streamer of 2022. I'm not gonna say best. I know I've done so in the past, I think, by awarding best components, but I really should just say favorite because I haven't experienced all network streamers available or that came to market in 2022 on this channel, not even close. But I can't think of anything else that has this feature set and this ease of use and also the app being so easy to use as well. But here's the catch though, the Win Mini went on sale at the very end of 2021, so last year. So you tell me, does that disqualify it from being awarded my favorite network streamer of 2022? Maybe, let us know in the comment section below, because if you say, yeah, it has to be released in 2022, and I really do think it does have to be released in 2022 to get a 2022 award, then I'm just gonna award the Win Pro because the value proposition is almost as good. And again, I can't think of any other network streamer that gets close to the Win Pro in terms of functionality. We'll have to ignore the kind of lesser sounding DAC, but in terms of pure streaming functionality with ease of use as, yeah, as the Win Pro this year, I can't think of anything else. But if you know of something else, please let us know in the comment section below. But if you're gonna do so, please tell us what streaming protocols your device supports because there are a few little network streaming pucks available on Amazon and I've had a bunch of people email me this year about them, but there's always something missing. So what we're looking for is Bluetooth, AirPlay 2, Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, those four things, if you think there's something better, it needs to do those four things. So please don't say, well, I've found this thing, but it doesn't do that one thing. Well, then it's not the same thing, then is it? It's not, it doesn't offer the same level of functionality as the Win Mini, which I think is an outstanding product. And it's fantastic for, yeah, frugal files, people who wanna save money. And who doesn't wanna save money, especially right now? So if you like this video, please give us a like down below. If you like my attitude, towards affordable audio, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. And yes, over the next few weeks, I'm going to be awarding some more of my favorite products of 2022. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and also, and I never say this, ring that bell.